Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am Peter Warshi, the Toronto website developer. And in this fifth video tutorial on uh, Bootstrap, I'm going to show you how we can create a nav bar for our site. Uh, something that's responsive that will respond to our different screen sizes. Um, and to do that, we're just going to use some good old fashioned uh, Bootstrap CSS classes. Uh, this part of the tutorial is a little bit verbose. So I'm going to be copying and pasting a lot of different code, but I'm going to walk you through all of it. Before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com. Here you can purchase my books, see all my tutorials, as well as purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. Uh, each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these uh, tutorials, keep them free, keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the book or video tutorials, please just leave a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube. Let me know how these are helping you out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. With that said, why don't we check out localhost bootstrap complete on HTML, and this is what our site is going to look like. So you see I've gone ahead and just kind of fixed up the images so that they're all standard. Uh, nice looking site. You'll see uh, our nav bar here is what I'm talking about. So we have our site title here. We have a home link, a blog link, and then we actually have a nice drop down that we can uh, pull from. And you'll see if I shrink this in, I get this nice uh, uh, drop down here. I think it's the hamburger drop down as what it's referred to as. And uh, this is all done with JavaScript. Uh, so the JavaScript bibles that we've added through jQuery and whatnot. Um, and it's all achieved just by using some Twitter bootstrap uh, classes. So why don't we go ahead and check all that out? You'll see here, here's our, our previous site. I'm just going to reload this um, just to have it lined up and matched up with kind of what we're working with. So why don't we check out our code? Um, as I mentioned before, here's index.html, here's complete index or rather complete.html and so there's quite a bit uh, rather than have you watch me type all this out I'm going to copy and paste some code and then we'll walk through exactly what we're doing so first thing I'm going to do is grab a couple classes here and I'm going to paste these in and we're going to do it just under our body tag and so here I'm just going to close up some of these divs and you'll notice I finally went ahead and fixed vim so that I'm using spaces and it's not as crazy anymore so what I've done here, first thing I've done is I've added a div class uh, and the class is using navbar, navbar default and navbar fixed top. The fixed top is optional. It's entirely up to you. What that provides us is this, uh, the floating navbar right at the top of the actual page where it's always going to be aligned up there. Um, and in order to do that, we have to add some padding, but I like that. I think it's a little bit more stylish. And so that's why I use it. You could take that out uh, and see what it does. I've also added role equals navigation. I think this is HTML5 tag. Um, you could use a, a nav class here, which is HTML5, uh, but because we're not using div, Twitter recommends that you add a role equals navigation. Next thing what I've done is I've added a div class for container fluid. This means that we'll always kind of fill the, the content for the nav bar. And then I've added a div class for navbar header. The navbar header is what actually provides us um, a the hamburger um, little icon there uh, for uh, the toggle collapsed uh, that we see when we actually shrink in the navbar. But it also provides us uh, the opportunity to put a navbar brand uh, or a name. Uh, in another video tutorial, I'll show you how we can create some uh, advanced navbar um, where we can add a branding icon as well as a, a search bar. But we'll do that in the next one. So here, as I mentioned three divs, and then I open up into a button. Uh, this button is what we see when we have a collapsed um, menu uh, for our navbar. And so you'll see the type is equal to button. The class, again, navbar toggle, I'm gonna to use collapsed. And now data toggle, uh, you're gonna to make that equal to collapse. And data target actually refers to the ID for the list that we're gonna be using. So that's how it pulls this information from. Um, and to be honest, I'm not even sure what area I expanded is. I just saw it on the Twitter site as I was researching this, um, getting ready for the tutorial. So I've added that as well. These spans here, these are what actually create the icon that we have. So if I added two more, I would have a, a five span icon and I'll show you that as well. I close off the button and then I just add this a tag. The a tag is really just uh, an href or a link to whatever we want it to be linked to. So I'm just linking to nothing. Typically this would just link back to your document root um, and whatever text you want to put in there. So I have TW tutorials. I close all of those off. And then when we head back to our site and we reload a page, see we get TW tutorials. It's linking to the, to the hashtag there. And if I uh, scroll these in, you'll see here, 
comes my icon and I've got five different lines as opposed to three and it's not giving me anything because I haven't actually linked to an ID uh, menu yet. So why don't we go ahead and do that. I'm going to head back over here and again I'm going to grab some text. So this is probably going to be pretty verbose but I'm going to go ahead and grab it for you. Um, oops. Yeah. So I want to grab all of this and I want to Put it in here, I believe. Let's take a look. Okay, so what we're doing is we're leaving the div for container fluid and the nav bar open. And so after the header, I've closed that off. And now I've created another div um, with the class of collapse and then nav bar dash collapse. And our ID is going to be nav bar list. And this corresponds to the data target up here. And you'll see here, I'll just highlight it for you. So data target navbar list is actually the same thing as the ID that we're using here. Then we go in, we just create a standard UL, uh, so an unordered list with the class of nav and then navbar dash nav, and then a bunch of uh, li um, tags. So I've gone ahead, I've added a class active for my home tag. Uh, this obviously would be a little bit of logic that you would use to determine whether or not you're actually on the home page. Um, and then I've got just a standard link to blog. And so it's just an li with an a inside of it. And then to get the drop down functionality, I use an li tag with a class of drop down. Inside of that, I have an, uh, an a with an href of the hashtag. Um, but then I also use classes equal to drop down dash toggle. Um, I've added a data toggle is equal to drop down, role is equal to button. Again, hash pop up or area hash pop up. Not entirely sure what that's all about. Um, but again, from the Twitter documentation, so I included that. And then the text that we want to see, and associated with that text, I've added a span class for caret, which provides that nice little caret to signify that it's a drop down. close off the span, close off the A, and then I open up another UL uh, unordered list, and so that class is going to have a drop down menu, um, and then a bunch of links inside of it. And you'll notice here, special line, uh, li role is equal to separator, and the class is divider, that gives us that nice line uh, in our menu. Um, and really that's it. I close everything up and we go ahead and we write that. And if I reload the page, you'll see I now have this pretty sweet looking uh, nav bar where I can click on blog, I can click on the drop down. I have the functionality. This obviously all depends on JavaScript. Um, and if I scroll these in, you'll see if I click on this guy, I get my nice drop down menu. Um, and that's really it. Um, just like that, we have a nice uh, nav bar. In the next video tutorial, we'll take a look at advanced nav bar stuff where we can write a line, some um, content here, and we'll also add a, a search uh, form so that we can uh, search our site as well. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. If this helped you, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. Uh, hopefully we'll see you for the next video tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.